Well, it would only be uh, fitting for two superlative players and human beings to add that it's not Sadine's day. Yeah. It's Sadine's week. <laughs> it could be Sadine's month for what we've got on our plate, but uh, starting Sunday uh, in, in the papers of Vancouver Province and, and, and the Sun, we're going to take a very close look at the Sedines in terms of the people, the players, those who knew them, uh, what, what could we can expect that night, and maybe what the organization should do uh, moving forward. Uh, it's hard to put it into quick summation here, Ed, but uh, uh, what does a week mean to you, and then what are your memories of these guys? Well, I got a couple of things. I remember at the end sitting there because we're doing these big projects when they're retiring and scratching my head. What can I write that I haven't written before in the last 18 years? What's a fresh angle? What's a fresh take? Sort of coming up with something and then relaxing, knowing you don't have to do it again. And here we are again two years later trying to do the same thing yeah. because you really want to step up to the plate because they're worthy yeah. of it and they're important to the franchise, the city, everything that involves in that. So I think we're just revisiting a lot of things. Maybe we're you know putting it in a slightly different context, maybe talking more people and and. It, much the same way the Canucks at 50, I'm, I'm finding, again, people are a little more candid, a little more honest. They're really willing to open up a little more about it. So, you know, I think we're still going to be able to deliver some pretty good stuff. I think my lasting memory is the final home game. And, and game days are, you know, there's a ritual. You're out on the ice for 10 or 15 yeah. minutes. You loosen up. You come in. You have a little bit of an interchange with the Canuck, or the, with the media, I should say. And that's it. Well... That morning at the whiteboard, Daniel and Henrik, I still have the recording, talked for more than 20 minutes right. on game day about life, about hockey. I saved it because I, I've never forgotten just how available they were, how articulate they were on everything that was happening on and off the ice in the community, in the city in general. So uh, I'm obviously we're going to have some personal reflections during the week. Uh, I'm going to take a look at um, why the Canucks have had so much success with Swedish players. 27 Swedes including Oscar, Oscar Fantenberg, Ed, I, I have, have I played for yep. the Canucks. Uh, and and I, I'm taking a close look at that. And I think we'd be remiss if we didn't think of, well, what are the Canucks going to do next? How are they going to recognize players who maybe deserve the Ring of Honor or maybe you should be, should be considered to have their numbers retired? And it's extremely polarizing because, as we know in Vancouver, Ed, it's not what you did when you were here. It's how you left. Mm. And, uh, you know, whether it's Todd Bertuzzi or Roberto Luongo, or the guy I interviewed the other day for an hour, Ryan Kessler, uh, whose career is probably over. What do you do with him? He was very open. He was very honest about his time here. Uh, so that's another thing we're doing. So uh, take a look at the Vancouver province and the Vancouver Sun all week leading up to the big night on Wednesday when Henrik and Daniel Sedin will have their jerseys retired.